This lesson is Chapter 8, Lesson 2, Function Rules. Rules can be found by looking for arithmetic or geometric sequences. Find the function, finding the function rule will allow you to find any term in that function. Determining if a sequence is arithmetic or geometric can help you find the pattern. When you know the pattern, you can continue the sequence to find missing terms. Letter A. Describe the relationship between the terms in the arithmetic sequence, then write the next three terms. So we're looking for a pattern here. 7, 14, 21, 28. Do you notice any sort of pattern? Good. You can add 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. 14 plus 7 is 21. And 21 plus 7 is 28. So the rule here is add 7. Now we need to find the next three terms. In order to find the next three terms or next three numbers, what we need to do is continue with the rule. Add 7. 28 plus 7 is 35. 35 plus 7 is 42. And 42 plus 7 is 49. And that's an arithmetic sequence. Letter B. Describe the relationship between the terms in the geometric sequence, then write the next three terms. Okay, do you see a pattern between 2, 4, 8, and 16? And I'll give you a hint. It's actually multiplication. What are you multiplying by, e by with each term? Good, 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So the rule here is times 2. So rule, I would say multiply by 2. So let's continue. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. But 64 times 2, that one I'm going to have to do the math for. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 6 is 12, which makes this 128. Now before we move on, letter A was an arithmetic sequence, and letter B was a geometric sequence. Take a look at those rules. Arithmetic was adding 7. Geometric was multiplying by 2. So I need you to write this down. An arithmetic sequence is actually going to be addition or subtraction. And a geometric sequence can be multiplication or division. Make sure you have this down, because you will need to know that. Letter C. Describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence, and then determine the type of sequence. Lastly, find the next three terms. All right, so find the pattern. 0, 15, 30, 45. What are you doing to get from eat from the preceding term to the next term. Good, you're adding 15. 0 plus 15 is 15. 15 plus 15 is 30. And 30 plus 15 is 45. So the rule is add 15. Because we are adding a number, is this arithmetic or geometric? Look back at the note you jotted down. Good, it's arithmetic. Now find the next three terms. 45 plus 15 is 60, plus 15 is 75, plus 15 is 90. Letter D. Describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence and then determine the type of sequence. Lastly, find the next three terms. 
So we have 4.5, 4, 3.5, 4, and 3. It's getting smaller. So let's try subtraction. Can I subtract something from 4.5 to 4 to get 4? And then the same number from 4 to 3.5 and 3.5 to 3? Good. You're actually minusing or subtracting 0 0.5. So the rule is minus 0 0.5. We are subtracting. So again, it's an arithmetic sequence. Let's keep going. 3 minus 0 0.5 is 2.5. Minus 0 0.5 is 2. Minus 0 0.5 is 1.5. Letter E. Describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence and then determine the type of sequence. Lastly, find the next three terms. So how do I get from 1 to 3 to 9 to 27? Good. We're actually multiplying by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 times 3 is 27. So the rule here is multiply by 3, which makes it a geometric sequence because we're multiplying. So let's find the next three terms. Well, I don't know what 27 times 3 is. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so 81. And then again, 81 times 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So 243. And then 243 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 1 is 7, which makes the last number 729. Letter F. Describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence and then the ter determine the type of sequence. Lastly, find the next three terms. So find the pattern between 3, 6, 12, and 24. Good. We're multiplying this time by 2. 3 times, six is, or three times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So the rule is to multiply by 2. We're multiplying, so it's a geometric sequence. And let's keep multiplying. 24 times 2 is 48. However, I'm going to have to do the math for the next two. 48 times 2. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So 96. And then 96 times 2. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 9 is 18. Plus 1 is 19, which makes our last term 192. Part 2, find a rule. A sequence can also be shown in a table. The table gives both the position of each term in the list and the value of the term. You can write an algebraic expression to describe a sequence. The value of each term can be described as a function of its position in the sequence. In the table below, the position can be considered the input, and the value of the term can be considered the output. So if you look here, 8 is first, 16 is second, 24 is third, and 32 is fourth. That's where the position comes in. So 8 is first, 16 is second, 24 is the third term, and 32 is the fourth term. Use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Letter A, complete the table to find the function rule, then find the value of the tenth term. So we have to find a rule. Look at your position and your value of term. How do I get from 1 to 3? 
And that same rule has to apply from 2 to 6, from 3 to 9, and from 4 to 12. What are you doing? Good. You're multiplying by 3. So take your n and multiply it by 3. So n times 3, which we would more nice, uh, more correctly, I guess, right? As 3 times n or 3n. That's the rule. You're just finding the pattern. Now the second part of this question tells us to find the value of the 10th term. So what do you think you're going to do? You're going to use your rule of 3n, and you're going to take 10 and plug it in. And again, I'm using 10 because of what it says right here. 3 times 10 is 30. So if I were to continue this pattern of this sequence, 3, 6, 9, 12, the 10th term would be 30. Letter B, complete the table to find the function rule, then find the value of the eighth term. So, how do you get from 2 to 12, from 3 to 18, from 4 to 24, and from 5 to 30? It's got to be the same thing for each pair. Good, we're multiplying by 6. So, it would be n times 6 or more correctly written, as 6n. If you had n times 6, that's okay. We just get used to writing your numbers before your variables. And the second part of the question says, find the value of the eighth term. So we're going to use our function rule and plug in 8 for n. And 6 times 8 is 48. So the eighth term in this sequence is 48. Letter C. Complete the table to find the function rule, then find the value of the 21st term. So how do you get from 3 to 7, 4 to 8, 5 to 9, and 6 to 10? Well, 4 times 2 is 8, but 3 times 2 is not 7, so I know it's not multiplication by 2. Can you add or subtract anything? Yeah, you can add 4. 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8, 5 plus 4 is 9, and 6 plus 4 is 10. Therefore, my rule is n plus 4. Now we need to find the 21st term. We plug in 21. 21 plus 4 is 25. So if I continue this pattern in this sequence, my 21st term will be 25. Letter D. The table shows the number of necklaces Ari can make. Based on the total number of hours she works, write a function rule to find the number of necklaces she can make in X hours. So this one, we're just finding the function rule. This one's a little bit tricky. If you're trying to find a pattern between 1 and 5, 2 and 7, 3 and 9, it's not one thing that's happening. If you re recall from the lesson before this, we had function tables that had two things happening. Multiplication and subtraction. Multiplication and addition. Okay, so this one is actually a two-step function rule. And here's how we figure it out. Take a look at your output, the number of necklaces. 5, 7, and 9. What's the pattern between 5, 7, and 9? Good, you're adding 2. So this is going to be a little tricky. You're adding 2, but the, all that means is you're taking 2 and multiplying it by your first term. We have to do something else here. We don't know what. Okay, so again, because this is plus 2, 2 is the magic number. So we're going to take 2 and multiply it by our input. Well, if I multiply 2 times 1, I get 2. All right? If I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4. 2 times 3, I get 6. 
if you notice, these don't match the outputs. But you should notice a pattern between 2 and 5, between 4 and 7, and 6 and 9. How do you get from 2 to 5, and 4 to 7, and 6 to 9? What are you doing? You're adding 3. So the rest of my rule is plus 3. A little bit tricky. Just follow the steps and you should be okay. Let's check it. Okay, if our rule is 2x plus 3, let's start with 1 hour. 2 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. That one works. Do the next one. 2 times 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. That one works out. And the last one, 2 times 3 plus 3. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. That one checks out. So the rule is 2x plus 3. Real quick, one more time. The pattern between 5, 7, and 9 was you're adding 2, so 2 is the magic number. We take 2 and multiply it by the input. Then what I did is I multiplied 2 times each of these inputs and got the numbers 2, 4, and 6. Then I found the pattern between 2 and 5, between 4 and 7, between 6 and 9, and that was plus 3. So the whole thing is 2x plus 3. Okay, that's the end of lesson two.